All right, this will be part two of the prologue. I don't know how many parts there's going to be. Probably around like three, but... Um, all right. This will be taken off right where part one left off. Zeth blinked, lashing himself to that distant point down the hallway. Stormlight raged from him in a flash, chilling his skin, and the ground immediately stopped pulling him downward. Instead, he was pulled toward that distant point. It was as if, to him, that direction had suddenly become down. This was a basic lashing, first of his three kinds of lashings. It gave him the ability to manipulate whatever force, spren, or god it was that held men to the ground. With this lashing, he could bind people or objects to different surfaces or in different directions. From Zeth's perspective, the hallway was now a deep shaft down which he was falling, and the two guards stood on one of the sides. They were shocked when Zeth's feet hit them, one for each face, throwing them over. Zeth shifted his view and lashed himself to the door. Light leaked from him. The floor of the hallway again became down, and he landed between the two guards, clothes crackling and dropping flakes of frost. He rose, beginning the process of summoning a shard blade. One of the guards fumbled for his spear. Zeth reached down, touching the soldier's shoulder while looking up. He focused on a point above him while willing the light out of his body and into the guard, lashing the poor man to the ceiling. The guard yelped in shock as up became down for him. Light trailing from his form, he crashed into the ceiling and dropped his spear. It was not lashed directly and clattered back down to the floor near Zeth. To kill. It was the greatest of sins. And yet here Zeth stood, truthless, profanely walking on stones used for building. And it would not end. As truthless, there was only one life he was forbidden to take. And that was his own. At the tenth beat of his heart, his shard blade dropped into his waiting hand. It formed as if condensing from mist, water beating along the metal length. His shard blade was long and thin, edged on both sides, smaller than most others. Zeth swept it out, carving a line in the stone floor and passing through the second guard's neck. As always, the shard blade killed oddly. Though it cut easily through stone, steel, or anything inanimate, the metal fuzzed when it touched living skin. It traveled through the guard's neck without leaving a mark, but once it did, the man's eyes smoked and burned. They blackened, shriveling up in his head, and he slumped forward dead. A shard blade did not cut living flesh. It severed the soul itself. Above, the first guard gasped. He'd managed to get to his feet, even though they were planted on the ceiling of the hallway. Shardbearer, he shouted. A shardbearer assaults the king's hall. To arms! Finally, Seth thought. Zeth's use of stormlight was unfamiliar to the guards, but they knew a shard blade when they saw one. Zeth bent down and picked up the spear that had fallen from above. As he did so, he released the breath he'd been holding in since drawing in the stormlight. It sustained him while he held it, but those two lanterns hadn't contained much of it, so he would need to breathe again soon. The light began to leak away more quickly now that he wasn't holding his breath. Zeth set the spear's butt against the stone floor, then looked upward. The guard above stopped shouting, eyes opening wide as the tails of his shirt began to slip downward, the earth below reasserting its dominance. The light steaming off his body dwindled. He looked down at Zeth, down at the spear tip pointing directly at his heart. Violet fear spren crawled out of the stone ceiling around him. The light ran out. The guard fell. He screamed as he hit, the spear impaling him through the chest. Zeth let the spear fall away, carried to the ground with a muffled thump by the body twitching on its end. Shard blade in hand, he turned down a side corridor, following the map he'd memorized. He ducked around a corner and flattened himself against the wall just as a troop of guards reached the dead men. The newcomers began shouting immediately, continuing the alarm. His instructions were clear. Kill the king, but be seen doing it. Let the Alethi know he was coming and what he was doing. Why? Why did the Parshendi agree to this treaty only to send an assassin the very night of its signing? 
More gemstones glowed on the walls of the hallway here. King Gavilar liked lavish display, and he couldn't know that he was leaving sources of power for Zeth to use in his lashings. The things Zeth did hadn't been seen for millennia. Histories from those times were all but non-existent, and the legends were horribly inaccurate. Zeth peeked back out into the corridor. One of the guards at the intersection saw him, pointing and yelling. Zeth made sure they got a good look, then ducked away. He took a deep breath as he ran, drawing in stormlight from the lanterns. His body came alive with it, and his speed increased, his muscles bursting with energy. Light became a storm inside of him. His blood thundered in his ears. It was terrible and wonderful at the same time. Two corridors down, one to the side. He threw open the door of a storage room, then hesitated a moment, just long enough for a guard to round the corner and see him, before dashing into the room. Preparing for a full lashing, he raised his arm and commanded the stormlight to pool there, causing the skin to burst alight with radiance. Then he flung his hand out toward the door frame, spraying white luminescence across it like paint. He slammed the door just as the guards arrived. The stormlight held the door in the frame with the strength of a hundred arms. A full lashing bound objects together, holding them fast until the stormlight ran out. It took longer to create and drain stormlight far more quickly than a basic lashing. The door handle shook, and then the wood began to crack as the guards threw their weight against it, one man calling for an axe. Zeth crossed the room in rapid strides, weaving around the shrouded furniture that had been stored here. It was of red cloth and deep, expensive woods. He reached the far wall, and preparing himself for yet another blasphemy, he raised his shard blade and slashed horizontally through the dark gray stone. The rock sliced easily. A shard blade could cut any inanimate object. Two vertical slashes followed, then one across the bottom, cutting a large square block. He pressed his hand against it, willing Stormlight into the stone. Behind him, the room's door began to crack. He looked over his shoulder and focused on the shaking door, lashing the block in that direction. Frost crystallized on his clothing. Lashing something so large required a great deal of Stormlight. The tempest within him stilled, like a storm reduced to a drizzle. He stepped aside. The large stone block shuddered, sliding into the room. Normally, moving the block would have been impossible. Its own weight would have held it against the stones below. Yet now that same weight pulled it free. For the block, the direction of the room's door was down. With a deep grinding sound, the block slid free of the wall and tumbled through the air, smashing furniture. The soldiers finally broke through the door, staggering into the room just as the enormous block crashed into them. Zeth turned his back on the terrible sound of the screams, the splintering of the wood, the breaking of bones. He ducked and stepped through his new hole, entering the hallway outside. He walked slowly, drawing stormlight from the lamps he passed, siphoning it to him and stoking anew the tempest within. As the lamps dimmed, the corridor darkened. A thick wooden door stood at the end, and as he approached, small fear spread shaped like globs of purple goo, began to wriggle from the masonry, pointing toward the doorway. They were drawn by the terror being felt on the other side. Zeth pushed the door open, entering the last corridor leading to the king's chambers. Tall, red ceramic faces lined the pathway, and they were interspersed with nervous soldiers. They flanked a long, narrow rug. It was red like a river of blood. The spearmen in front didn't wait for him to get close. They broke into a trot, lifting their short, throwing spears. Zeth slammed his hand to the side, pushing Stormlight into the doorframe, using the third and final type of lashing, a reverse lashing. This one worked differently from the other two. It did not make the doorframe emit Stormlight. Indeed, it seemed to pull nearby light into it, giving it a strange penumbra. The spearman threw and Zeth stood still, hand on the doorframe. Reverse lashing required his constant touch, but took comparatively little stormlight. 
Daring one, anything that approached him, particularly lighter objects, was instead pulled toward the lashing itself. The spears veered in the air, splitting around him and slamming into the wooden frame. As he felt them hit, Zeth leaped into the air and latched himself to the right wall, his feet hitting the stone with a slap. He immediately reoriented his perspective. To his eyes, he wasn't standing on the wall. The soldiers were, the blood-red carpet streaming between them like a long tapestry. Zeth bolted down the hallway, striking with his shard blade, shearing through the necks of two men who had thrown spears at him. Their eyes burned and they collapsed. The other guards in the hallway began to panic. Some tried to attack him. Others yelled for more help. Still others cringed away from him. The attackers had trouble. They were disoriented by the oddity of striking at someone who hung on the wall. Seth cut down a few, then flipped into the air, tucking into a roll, and lashed himself back to the floor. He hit the ground in the midst of the soldiers, completely surrounded but holding a shard blade. According to legend, the shard blades were first carried by the Knights Radiant, uncounted ages ago. Gifts of their god granted to allow them to fight horrors of rock and flame, dozens of feet tall, foes whose eyes burned with hatred. The Voidbringers. When your foe had skin as hard as stone itself, steel was useless. Something supernal was required. Zeth rose from his crouch, loose white clothes rippling, jaw clenched against his sins. He struck out, his weapon flashing with reflected torchlight. Elegant, wide swings. Three of them, one after another. He could neither close his ears to the screams that followed, nor avoid seeing the men fall. They dropped around him like toys knocked over by a child's careless kick. If the blade touched a man's spine, he died, eyes burning. If it cut through the core of a limb, it killed that limb. One soldier stumbled away from Zeth, arm flopping uselessly on his shoulder. He would never be able to feel it or use it again. Zeth lowered his shard blade, standing among the cinder-eyed corpses. Here in Alethkar, men often spoke of the legends of mankind's hard-won victory over the Voidbringers. But when weapons created to fight nightmares were turned against common soldiers, the lives of men became cheap things indeed. All right, on to part three. Man, this is going to be long. Hope you guys enjoy. <laughs>